Greetings, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you searching for hope, meaning, and purpose in your life? At Bradley United Methodist Church, we are convinced you will find these things in the grace of Jesus. We believe Jesus died and rose again because all people deserve a life of joy and fulfillment today and forever. And we hope our online worship can help you connect in faith and grow in grace in new and helpful ways. I'm Pastor Dave Cyphers, and I'm coming to you from my home study in Greenfield. I'm Cheryl Gooden. I'm coming to you from my dining room in Greenfield. And once again this week, we are delighted to have Zach Evans uh, with us doing uh, deaf interpretation. And you can see him in the corner. And later on in the service, you'll get to see Devin Shaw coming to us from Erie, Pennsylvania uh, with some special music. But for now, welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Please allow me to call us to worship. This is Psalm 66, verses 16 through 20. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Let us pray. Loving God in whom we live and move and have our being, help us to choose life in you, that we may keep the commands of Jesus, follow in the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and witness to the hope that is within us, sharing Christ's love in the world. We pray this in his precious name. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27. Listen and hear the good news. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have kept my commandments and kept keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. May God's blessing be upon the ministry of the word among us today. Would you pray with me again, please? Come, Holy Spirit, our helper and advocate. Open our hearts and minds this day. Entice us with your presence. Spark us with a word of life, a message that we may share with others as we seek to live Christ's love in the world. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I remember that day, that day, vividly. It is a day I will never forget. It was a Tuesday, and earlier that morning, upon my dad's call, I had arrived at my childhood home to find my mom completely incapacitated from the cancer that had slowly and painfully overtaken her body over the course of the prior three years. She was in pretty serious respiratory distress, and it seemed that death for her might be only moments away, that every breath could be her last. 
A quick check with my dad indicated that first, none of the arrangements had been made, and second, he had no clue how to make them. And neither did I. This was my first rodeo with a dying parent. So I did what I hope every one of you will do if you find yourselves in this situation. I called their pastor. And after Reverend Moore helped me to understand what needed to be done, we talked a little bit about the funeral service and, and agreed that I, as a pastor, needed to allow myself to be ministered to and that I would leave the service to her. And that worked for a little while. But on Sunday night, after she passed away, God woke me up literally at the stroke of midnight and laid on my heart a call to share with people how the grace of Jesus Christ had been at work in her life, especially during the difficult times. God led me to these same verses from John 14, and by 5 a.m., a meditation had been born that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, I was able to share at her funeral two days later. And I'd like to share this story of God's grace with you today, because I know that most all of us have experienced loss. And together, all of us are in the midst of a very troubled time today. So let's reflect for a moment on that last verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. These are wonderful words of comfort and encouragement, aren't they? They are the words of Jesus to his closest friends, his closest followers on the eve of his death. The men to whom he speaks have become very used to experiencing the very presence of God through Jesus' physical existence among them. And Jesus knows that this is all about to change. So he comforts them. He encourages them. He reminds them that even though their relationship will change from a physical one to a spiritual one, he will always be with them. And through him, so will the very presence of God, even through, through the difficult times that he knows are before them. And the good news is, is that this same promise is available for all of us today. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the same promise the guarantee that he will never leave us or forsake us. Through our relationship with him, we receive the power of the Holy Spirit by which we experience the very presence of God in our lives, even during the difficult times. And it's easy to recognize God at work in times of great blessing, isn't it? It's easy to perceive God's greatness as it's revealed in all its glory on the mountaintop. But what about in the valley? You know, my mother took a very long, painful, and difficult walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And it would be easy for those of little faith to say that God had deserted her. But I want to bear witness to you today. God did not desert her at all. My God doesn't work that way. And your God doesn't work that way either. Even though God didn't grant us the healing miracle we are all we were all praying for, I still saw God's presence in her life very clearly during this difficult time. And I have become aware and, and want to share with you today that my mother also saw God's grace and presence at work during this period with equal clarity. God was at work the day we first received the diagnosis. We saw her oncologist in an office near Community North Hospital in Indianapolis. And the news was not good. The prognosis was indeed bleak. And it was a long drive, a very, very long and silent drive from that office in Castleton to another office by St. Vincent's Hospital for the second and unfortunately concurring opinion regarding her cancer. It was difficult, oh so difficult for any of us not to be anxious, for any of us not to be afraid of this burden and rightfully so, no one was more anxious and afraid than my mother. But at the reception desk of this second doctor, an angel of God's mercy appeared. That angel calmed my mother's heart at just the point when she needed it most. 
the receptionist, it turned out, was a long lost friend of hers, a sorority sister from Delta Gamma at Butler University, and a relationship that God had prepared and preserved to be used for his purposes at this very moment to comfort her and protect her from despair. They sat behind the reception desk and talked while we waited for our turn with the doctor. And I remember my mom being encouraged by this lady's story of how she was a survivor of breast cancer. And later that night on the doorstep of my parents' house, another angel of God's mercy appeared. This time it was a friend of hers who was able to give her the emotional support she needed at just the moment when I ran out of what little capability I had left to do that on my own. And there were many more angels of God's mercy and grace that showed their beautiful faces in the months and years that followed. We saw many of them at the funeral home and others we saw at the funeral the next day. I saw the very presence of God in the faces of all those people who cared. And I know that we recognized each one of these things as the body of Christ in action, revealing God's presence at work, even in those tough, tough final days. I know that she recognized this because when I talked to her pastor about what she wanted for her memorial service, the pastor told me that she thought there were some notes regarding her wishes in her pink Bible box. This pink Bible box contained a women's devotional Bible that I had given her for Christmas a couple of years before. And I was fearful that it had never been cracked open during the time that followed. But you know, after I talked to her pastor, I opened that box and out spilled a whole pile of snippets of various devotional material that people had sent to her. There was a list of at least 50 hymns she wanted us to sing at her memorial service and another list of every scripture anyone had suggested or read to her, each with, of course, if you know my mama, a neat little check mark beside it and a note describing exactly what it meant to her. From this, it became so very clear to me that through God's presence, working in the people of God, my mother had found the peace of God that endures for her, I believe, even today. You know, as we are all acutely aware now, our world is experiencing a tough time. And for some folks, these are dreadfully difficult days. May we be encouraged by Jesus' promise that he will never leave us. And in this promise, may we find the peace of the steadfast love of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. By grace, through our faith in Jesus, God is with us, even in these difficult times. Amen. And now let us respond to the proclamation of the word by reciting together this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we lift to God the cares and concerns of our hearts for our congregation, community, and world, let us respond to God with thanksgiving as we give thanks to God with our prayers. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray for all who search that they may find their way in you. Bless us with lips that sing your praise and lives that tell the stories of all that you have done for us. Open our eyes to find you among us as we share your love with others. We pray for all who are oppressed by governments or institutions, for those whose voices are not heard or believed, those with no one on their side. Bless us with a joy for justice and the strength to persevere as we work toward your coming realm. We pray for all who hunger and those who worry each day how they will care for their families. Bless us all with the meaningful work and fill us with good things as we love and care for each other and find our sustenance in you. We pray for all who suffer the violence and scars of a war, for all soldiers and their families, and all who live and serve in war-torn places. Give them courage in the face of fear. In times of trouble, do not let their feet slip. Bless us with your vision of peace, for you have made us one family by giving us life and breath. We remember before you all who have died and pray for all who will die today, that they may know your peace. Bless us with the gift of faith, that we may know you and love you and enjoy life eternal shared with you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we close, I would ask you to note that the post or email that brought you to the link to this online worship experience contains a link to our online giving portal. As you feel led, please use that link to give thanks to God with your gifts, tithes, and offerings, or send your offering to the church directly at 210 West Main Street, Greenfield, Indiana, 46140. Thank you for your generosity. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to love and serve your Lord in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Be safe. And be God's.